I'm Carrie Goldring with the Divorce Lending Association, and I'm a Certified Divorce Lending Professional, or CDLP. This is part of our Divorce Literacy Series here in Michigan, and today I'm here with Carolyn Klinger, and I'm going to ask her to introduce herself and tell us a little bit about you. Hi. Hi, Carrie. How are you? Uh, my well. name is Carolyn Klinger. I'm with Klinger Benefits. Um, I'm an insurance broker who helps um, individuals obtain their own health insurance or Medicare or supplemental coverage like life insurance and you know some other products. But my primary focus is insurance, um, health and, and Medicare. And so in such a complex category, um, I try to help people understand all their options, evaluate whether or not um, individual coverage is the best thing for them, and then we kind of funnel down from there as to you know what plan, what carrier, all the details. Perfect. So I know a lot of times I'll refer people to you who are going through divorce or just recently divorced, and they were on their spouse's insurance. So now all of a sudden, they don't have their own insurance, either because they were a stay-home parent or their current job doesn't cover it or they didn't need it before. Um, so tell me a little bit about when someone calls you, how do you know what type of insurance to get them? Or is there a certain, everyone's always so familiar with that window of time and maybe because they're going through divorce that doesn't come up. So will you just explain how that works when someone gives you a call? For sure. So um, everybody's situation is completely different. So first of all, the fact that they're potentially losing coverage is going to give them a special enrollment opportunity. So that doesn't matter really what time of year, as long as they can prove that they're losing coverage. So then we talk about what kind of coverage they've had, um, what their financial responsibility has been for it, and really how much of it they've used. Because depending on the time of the year when someone's going through this transition, um, if they've met their deductible or their max out of pocket and they have an option to uh, potentially uh, continue it with COBRA, that may be the best option for the balance of that year. It may okay. not be. It really depends. So we, talk, we look into all of those things. And if those situations are not uh, either feasible, you know, for one reason or another, then we start looking at individual insurance. Um, and depending on their age, we'll obviously that will focus whether it's Medicare or non-Medicare. And then we talk about the marketplace, the healthcare.gov that everyone hears about, but not necessarily having any experience with it. So we determine whether or not somebody qualifies for some help through the marketplace, because some people will and some won't. And so that's a series of questions that we kind of, um, you know, look through. So it's really a, you know, kind of a funneling process. It's a lot of questions, um, not about their health specifically, it's about everything else basically to help figure out if it makes sense at this point to go on the individual marketplace or off the marketplace or maybe stay on a COBRA option if, okay. if that's so offered. Let's do this scenario. So I have someone who's going through divorce. They were not the working spouse. They were just on their spouse's insurance obviously you know might be contentious so they can't go around and ask a bunch of questions what if someone has no clue if they've met their deductible or what type of coverage they had is that something that you have to know or is there a way to find out if there's a way to find out you know they probably have an insurance card that they could call and find out their own individual um what they've satisfied individually um Every company is completely different as to whether or not they're going to be allowed to stay on that coverage is not the working, you know, the working um, employee. So, I mean, there is going to have to be some information, you know, gathered because to just automatically jump into an individual plan sometimes is not the best, the person's best interest. So we really need to know some information and I can help guide them, you know, if, you know, everybody has or typically has an insurance card, so you can they can call customer service, find out where they are with that, maybe find out some details about the plan. Like you said, some people don't even know what the deductible was, or you know, if they've met it. Um, but even in the, in the individual insurance company is not going to be able to tell them if they're going to have an option to continue it. So that really is going to have to come from the HR department of the company in in pretty much every case. 
Okay. So that's and anyone be... could call that HR company if they're covered currently on their insurance and say, hey, this is what's happening to me. It may it may have to be the spouse that works for that company, honestly. I mean, I, I don't know. Every every case is completely different. It we try different. to avoid that if it's a contentious situation, but we also have to get the information to help the person make their best choice. Okay. So what we really shouldn't do is have someone say, oh, shoot, I'm losing my insurance and I don't have it anymore and take that card and shred it because they're angry. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because it's <laughs> typically not going to end right then. You know, right? So they need to figure right. out. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. And I think that's one really scary thing when you're going through divorce, besides not knowing where you're going to live and not knowing where you're going to get your income from. I think then the next scary thing is, how am I going to be covered in case something goes wrong? Yeah, I think it's comforting for people to know that, you know, I'm a broker, I work with all the different carriers, and I don't cost them anything. So I get paid by the carriers, and I get paid the same from all of them. So it's important for people to know that I have their best interest at heart to try to really help them figure out what's going to make the most sense for them moving forward. And they're not awesome. responsible to pay me. Because okay. a lot, there's a lot of expenses associated with the divorce as well, right? So there's one right. last thing that they have to worry about. That's that's great news. And it reminds me of like the insurance broker who calls around looking for home insurance. Same, you just, you're doing it for health insurance. Right, right. And the cost is going to be the same whether they call the carrier themselves or, or go through me. So there's no, you know, there's a benefit of being able to compare. For sure. And I like when I refer people to you because you do do the calling around, you know how to talk the insurance talk, you understand when they give you the lingo, you know what all the things mean that other people don't know. And I feel like you really do a really good job of comparing coverage versus cost and can explain it after to somebody so they really get extra benefit by talking to you. Well, I guess that comes with 15 years of experience. Which so thank is, you. I appreciate that. So 15 years. So how, how did you get started in the whole insurance industry? Well, I was not in anything related to it at all. I actually had a marketing uh, company for new home builders for 15 years prior. Oh, um, so we operated as like an in-house marketing department for those that are were not big enough to have their own in-house department. Um, in 2008, when all the builders went out of business, our, oh. We had to fold our company. So oh. I needed to find something that I could be helping people is kind of was my goal. I knew I could sell. I knew I had a marketing degree, but that's pretty much the last thing people were hiring as a marketing person in 2008. <laughs> no so, extra money. <laughs> exactly. So I had to figure out, you know, how I could help people and obviously, you know, make a living. So that's how I started. And I worked for, you know, worked for a couple of companies now and then started about five years ago, started my own company. So it just gave me an opportunity to work with as many carriers as possible to give my clients as many choices as possible. It's, that's so fabulous. So for people who don't know, even though I know I my audience is more divorce related, but you brought up Medicare. Right. So it's so tell me what age is that? When should somebody contact you? Give me just a little lowdown on that. So Medicare is age 65 um, and higher if you're not covered elsewhere. So somebody who's, you know, turning 65 but is still working doesn't necessarily have to go on Medicare. At that okay. point, it's a conversation. There's no, you hear about the penalties and all that associated with it. There's no penalty as long as you have credible coverage. So I have clients who work to their 70 and then go on Medicare. And I have clients who still are still working but because of the way their coverage is, how much it costs them, what the actual details of it is, um, it may make sense for them to go on Medicare and still work. Because people get very confused between Medicare as the insurance connection and Social Security. Because you, mm -hmm. they're, they're interrelated in terms of you can go to the Social Security office and sign up for Medicare, they don't necessarily know that you can defer Social Security, which is a financial planner question I can't answer. Mm -hmm. um, and still go on Medicare at 65. Mm -hmm. And then there are some people who are, go on Medicare after being on a disability for 24 months in Michigan. So they could be under 65 and eligible for Medicare. So sometimes, you know, one spouse is eligible for Medicare and, and another one is, you know, too young. I mean, there's so many, again, so many scenarios in that situation. 
it's important, you know, to be able to help people who, regardless of their age and in that situation. And that, and I, and Medicare is even more complex if you can believe it than you know under sixty five individual insurance. So that's really where the education component comes in, because there's a lot of options, and it's important for people to really understand all the options before they start making choices. So people should really talk to you about it when they turn 64 and give a bunch of leeway time to get again. Yeah, I mean, I'll let them, you know, find out, are you going to be still working? You know, what does your coverage look like? I mean, 64, maybe a little bit early, maybe, you know, six months prior to turning 65. Um, Typically people will call and say, you know, I'm getting ready to turn 65. I want to come off my spouse's insurance. What do I do? So the first thing they need to do is actually sign up for original A and B through the government and then come back to me and we talk about all the supplemental. Um, and then they, I also may say, you know what, stay in your current coverage as long as you can, even if you're turning 65. You could, some people sign up for A because it doesn't cost anything. Um, that's the hospital portion of it, um, inpatient services. Um, and because it's not costing them anything, it becomes secondary to their group coverage. And there's uh, you know, some advantages to doing that but it's not a requirement. And there's a lot of confusion around that because of, you know, all you hear about is I'm going to get a penalty. I'm going to incur a penalty, you know, type of thing. So I can right. at least explain if that's applicable to them. That's great. And especially with the people going through the whole divorce process, they've already gone through so much using because they're right. breaking down their whole, you know, everything. And then they're constantly rebuilding, rebuilding. So to have somebody like you who could really dig in and help figure out what they do and don't need and when is so helpful because what we're realizing is it does take a village right (laughs) oh for sure and I do a lot of oh for sure and I do a lot of preliminary meetings you know to just do some planning even if it's six months out just so they kind of know, you know, what my budget's going to be, what it's going to look like, how this is going to work and things like that. So they're not signing up for anything when we meet the first time, which is totally fine because at least they have some peace of mind. They have a kind of a roadmap of what to do. And then a few months later, we actually meet again and, you know, actually get them enrolled. That's wonderful. Well, I know anyone that I have sent to you has always been very happy and feels like they've made good educated decisions. So good. That, that I appreciate. So is there anything else that you can think of that you'd like to leave everybody with today? Um, well, I have all the information on my website, which is clingerbenefits.com. That may help be helpful. And then down at the bottom here is my phone number. It's my personal cell phone number. You're never going to get you know, a third party. So be, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions somebody has, even if, like I said, they're not ready at this point, just to be able to explain, maybe give them some, you know, some things to think about before they get to the point where they really need to make a decision quickly. Cause it's, it's one of those things that there's a lot of details. And so we need to, you know, take the time to make a good decision. For sure. And I'm going to say your phone number, cause this is also going to go on a podcast and it's 248-459-2268. Right. Yeah. Thank you Wonderful. so much. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and I'm sure I will talk to you soon. Great. All right. Talk to you later, Carrie.